Hello, my name is Father Jacob Rouse, and I'm the pastor of Notre Dame Parish in Cresco, Iowa. And for today's video, I'd like to tell you about the three C's. My three C's. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure where I heard these before. Uh, maybe a Brene Brown podcast or book or a parenting psychology page on Instagram or I don't remember. Anyway, um, I find them helpful. And I know there's other different configurations um, of what the three C's are and whether they apply to advertising or marketing or mental health or creativity or whatever it is. Also, I might have done a video on this before, but I can't remember because I don't go through all my old ones. But even if I did, um, I'm a different person now than I was then and than I was yesterday. So anyway, enough. Um, let's uh, go into what the three C's are. So anytime they are compare, compete, and control. Anytime I am disturbed or upset or my serenity is bothered, um, usually one of these three C's, if not all of them, are at play. And so by telling you about compare, compete, and control, um, maybe you can be aware of what's working on you and bothering you. So um, first off is compare. Are you comparing yourself to others? If something is bothering you internally, are you comparing yourself to others? You can compare yourself to others in a lot of different areas. You could compare your body weight or your body uh, type or your amount of college debt or your car or a number of Facebook likes or um, who they're dating right now. You could compare how the number of behaved children you have. Um, you compare a lot of things between you and another person. And uh, it's really only gonna make you sad um, or envious. Or it'll make you prideful by saying, oh, wow, I'm much better than them. I, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want you to do any of that either. So the only person you should be comparing yourself to is the person you were yesterday. Um, so uh, <laughs> the next one is uh, compete. Um, are you competing? Now, this one might sound similar to compare, but it is a little bit different. Who are you competing against? If you're all lined up in your brain um, and, and we're all on a starting block together and we're running towards the finish line, who are you competing against? Look left and look right. Are you competing with that priest down the road or that mother across the pew or across the aisle at mass? Um, are you comp competing with your neighbor who has less fights with their spouse than you do? Um, competing. Competing implies that I have to get farther, and I have to do more, and I have to win. Um, but really, I think in the competition of becoming a saint, that is achieving holiness throughout your life and then making it into heaven, really the only person you're competing against is, is yourself, once again, <laughs> who, who you were yesterday. Um, and caveat, of course, I'm all about competition in sports and music and art and, you know, marketing, whatever, you know, competition furthers things in, in certain areas, but that's kind of the, the hobby or the art or the skills that you've signed up for. What I'm talking about is competing interior in your heart and in your mind with the person next to you, because it's probably not even a competition in their head. Um, and they're probably not thinking about as much as you are. So, um, the third one is control. What are you trying to control and do you actually have control over it? This isn't fatalism. This isn't like being passive and this isn't just accepting whatever happens and then just sitting there. No, this is an active approach to looking at what you can and cannot control because uh, yesterday I cannot. Well, first of all, I like to start with gravity. Gravity. Um, yesterday I reached into my fridge to grab a pack of blueberries and then my hand slipped and then they fell and then exploded all over the floor. Lovely. So can I control, I could control how my grip strength was, or I could control if my hands were wet or not from uh, washing dishes right before that, but I can't control gravity. So getting upset about it and staying mad about it isn't really helpful. It just disturbs me. Um, we can't control the weather. We can't control gravity. We can't control whether your sports team wins or loses. You just watch it on the couch. Um, you can't control your neighbor's opinion of you or what they think or what they think about politics. You can't control um, how many likes they get on Facebook or whatever. What the, really, the only thing we can control in life is ourselves, how we respond to things, and what we're going to do next. Um, and I found that once I 
make that circle of control, things I'm trying to control versus what I actually can't control, smaller and more realistic, more in line with reality, I find I'm a lot happier. Um, it might sound trite to you, uh, but we do say at every single AA meeting, uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, I think there's some uh, good advice in that. So uh, maybe next week I'll make a video about three C's that can combat these, but I just think knowing uh, the tricks of the enemy, meaning Satan or your old self, um, of how uh, he tries to um, disrupt our peace is, is really effective because then we can um, give comparison, competition, and control over to God completely. So that's my invitation to you. I uh, hope you take it one day at a time, and I will see you this weekend.